Hey guys, it's Catherine. So we are back for week six, and what a way to celebrate week six of Movie Friday. Are you guys ready for two movies that are Hollywood classics that if you don't know, people will really, really think that they're, they, they will immediately discount you in Hollywood? These are two movies you have got to know. You've got to know. So, and, and just every movie critic refers to these. So they all refer to these. So if you are moving, reading, reading movie reviews and things like that, they will open your eyes and, and you'll be like, oh, that's what they're referring to. So you've got to just know these. You've got, if you love movies, you've got to know these two movies. So we are going into serious classic territory this weekend. Serious classic territory. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because I've shared these movies before and people who have not known them have just been like, how, how, how did I not know? How did I not know? So here we go. Okay. So number one is Pretty in Pink. There is an entire song and it was like big hit, number one hit, Pretty in Pink. And it is Molly Ringwald. She was huge. She moved away to France, so people didn't know about her because she was so big in so many movies. And so you have got to know Molly Ringwald. Anyway, so Pretty in Pink is big. One of the reasons that I love Pretty in Pink is because, and and the other one is totally not like Pretty in Pink at all. Like it's a very, very different thing. And and it is even better than Pretty in Pink. Like, like way, way better if that's even possible. But I, I think it's better. I've watched it way more than I've watched Pretty in Pink. But here's why you need to know Pretty in Pink and why I think it's relevant to today's culture. I just think parents should have their kids watch it anyway. And that's because today's culture is very, very much about, um, well, a few things go on in Pretty in Pink that I want you guys to pay close attention to. Pretty in Pink is one of the last films where they portrayed homes and living arrangements and clothing as we lived like as we lived and as things were and not advertisements as how we should be living or how they want us to live. For example, like if you watch like Modern Family today, they portray homes, every single home that they are in. No one's home looks like that. Like not unless you have a lot of money, like every home is an advertisement. The homes aren't cluttered. The homes aren't trash. Every single home, in order to look like that, you have to have a housekeeper. And that's the whole point is they want you to spend money. Like it's an advertisement of how things should be. When you watch Pretty in Pink, they portray homes as they were. Like everyone's house, like when you went over to somebody's house, like there was a middle class and that is how we lived. Like that is how houses were when people had money and when they didn't have money. This is how the this is how the houses w w were. And and there's a whole Hollywood used to portray people as they they were. They did it in Sex Lies and Videotape. They did it in all the movies and you will notice that they do the same thing in Goonies. They portray houses as they were, not as advertisements of how things should be. Like, oh, that's how I'm supposed to be living. It's very subtle. Like there's this subtle changeover. But now when you watch, there's an unconscious thing when you watch and you're like, oh, I, I should have that in my home. Like that's how I should, oh, I should be dressing like that. Like that's how I should dress. There is no portrayal of like how people actually live. Like the office was about the only thing that even came close. And it was shocking because no one was doing that. No one was portraying people who looked grungy and had bad haircuts and didn't wash or whatever and had houses that didn't look. And But even then, there was still an undercurrent of sales. And it was smart. I mean, Hollywood was smart to do that. Like, it was a sales pitch of, of this kind of, like, get people to buy by portraying, like... Um, you know, people talk about merchandising and putting like a big Pepsi sign in the background. Well, they started to do it on TV as well and in the homes and making your home fancy so that you'll buy home goods. And now we have stores like Home Goods and now we have sales chant like channels where it's like hot deals of the week or whatever. And here's what I bought at Home Goods. And what is Home Goods for? To make your house look like the houses do on TV. And then you don't have money in your paycheck because they all have your money. You don't have your money. Warren Buffett said something very interesting. I mean, it blew my mind when he said it because people are like, oh, we're so poor today, we're so poor today. And Warren Buffett was like, America's actually doing really well. And I was just like, I cannot believe he's saying that, right? 
you have to see, I'll leave a link to the documentary uh, below that Matt Damon did. Matt Damon did an incredible documentary when you guys freaked out and said, oh, sh what do you mean the middle class, the 1% wants to eliminate the middle class? Because there's proof. Like, there is charts and graphs and proofs. And, and Matt Damon did a documentary on it, and I'll include the link below. All right, so basically, Warren Buffett, what he was saying was that Americans are still wealthy as we were in the 50s. Now, the 50s, I was just like, <clears throat> holy crap, that's a big thing to say because the 50s are when your grandparents were making bank. The 50s are, we just had, in the 50s, we went on an, America just went up like this for four decades and we just didn't stop. We never had a crash for like four decades in a row. We just kept going up. And that is why our grandparents are so wealthy. Like that generation just has so much money and they're all on cruise ships and they can cruise the world and like live on a cruise ship. That's because in the 50s they were making bank and then they did smart things with it. Um, but they didn't have all these places. They didn't have home goods. They didn't have Sephora. They didn't have Ulta. They didn't have all these different places to go spend it. Um, and that's what I learned from Warren Buffett. He was like, if you look at the 50s, they had just as much money as we do for personal spending income as we do today. It's just that they didn't choose to spend it the same way. If you look at the American household. Now, you can argue with that and say, look, our paychecks don't look the same. But if you make a list, like if you actually make a list of what you spend, like go ahead and take your paycheck and then write down like a great way to do it. Like what I did, like I couldn't believe like when we did our taxes, um, my nurse, well, my tax lady, she said, and I talk, I think I talk about this a little bit. My tax lady was like, I, I think you should look and see if your medical expenses are 10%. And my husband and I were like, oh, no, no, like, we don't think it's 10%. And then my nurse was like, well, have you considered this? Have you considered this? And we were like, oh, oh, crap, we should go look. And finally, like, we kept trying to, like, add up and figure it all out. And finally, it just came down to we had to literally line item our bank account. And we went to our bank account statements and line. I, I went through our bank account statement and I literally line ironed it. And I found out I had no life. It was just like Amazon video, Amazon video rental. <laughs> and, and then, and then medical expense, medical expense, medical expense, Amazon video rental, Netflix, Amazon video rental, medical expense. I mean, that was my life. That was our life. Like, that and then Walmart where, you know, Walmart orders where we order to, to get to the house all of our groceries and things for the nurse um, for her to clean the house and things like that. And that was it. And that's when I really found out like exactly what our life looked at and where our expenses were. And that's when I found out, wow, we're spending on nothing. Like there were no cosmetics purchases. There were no frills. It was all medical expenses. And I, I just saw it line item line item you learn your life and someone said you can really learn a person's priorities when you look at their checkbook and i i challenge you to do that like people don't do checkbooks any anymore so i i would really challenge you to go ahead and just look at your bank account and see or your paypal statement or whatever and just look at look at the businesses just forget the numbers but look at the businesses that show up on there like what businesses are showing up on your bank account statement and parents, go look and look at your bank account statement. Like, go look and see on your bank account statement and see where it's going. If it is not going to a grocery store, if it's not going to the grocery store and the electric company and that's it, then then that's it. Like, that, because that in the 50s, that's what they did. That it, it went to the savings account, the grocery store, and that's it. And every... Like, like I said, like they would buy a lipstick, it would last them forever. And I should say, when I say things about expired products, like it's a new thing, they always said like there's an expiration date on it, but people just didn't, like they kept their lipsticks. Like it always had, I don't know if they started stamping them with expiration dates um, all the way back in the 50s. I think that they may have, um, but people just didn't use them that way. I mean, there's a reason. So anyway, moving on. So just, I thought that that was really interesting. Um, so we we have money today that we don't realize that we have. And we think that we don't have it. We think that we are extremely poor. But it's because so much we are 
letting so much of it go because we think that we need things that we don't necessarily need. Like I learned when I saw all of those expenses going out for video rentals, I was like, I'm out. Like, I was like, I'm not buying that many movies anymore. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, we're done. Like, I started going through my movie list because I had made this movie list. Like, I have a book, all the movies that I knew that my friend needed to watch. And I just started going through and I was just like, only if they're free. Like, only if they're free. I was like, we are not watching them unless they're free. And then I started buying, like, I would buy, like, HBO for one month and watch what was on there for, for free and then unsubscribe. Because if you add it up, all the movies, rid rentals, like the two ninety nine, dollars it doesn't seem like much at a time until you add it all up. And it just, it can really be extreme. So for us, when we're spending a third of our paycheck, which is significant on medical expenses, does that make sense? All right, moving on. Um, so anyway, that's a big thing with Pretty in Pink. It, the second thing I want to talk about with Pretty in Pink is number one was the homes and how they portray them. Number two, fashion, like fashion that Pretty in Pink truly shows the fashion that fashion is not what they tell you it is. Fashion is not whatever the books tell you is in fashion. Fashion is when you make your own personal statement. It's when you find what you look good in and what you love and when you wear that. And you will find out that when you wear what they say is fashionable, you'll find out that you're wearing that for other people. You're wearing that so that you're not bullied. It doesn't mean you look good in it. And it doesn't mean that you're necessarily fashionable. Like Iris Apfel, like she wears things that she will go to a store and she'll pay like $1.99 for a bracelet and they'll put it on the cover of Vogue because she looks hot in it. And like if you're looking at the stuff back here, like you can't tell there is stuff back here that I got at a 99 cent store and stuff that I got back here at like, you know, a Neiman Marcus thing. And can you tell the difference? You can't. It's not what you think. Let me tell you the things that you're thinking are the 99 cents, it's not, like it's not at all. And a big proof of that, a big proof of that is when you watch that one show, like Fashion Star or whatever, or not Fashion Star, the one that has that one designer, oh God, I can't remember his name now. Um, <clears throat> but that star, that one show they had uh, with the dark curly hair, tall guy, um, fashion designer, Huh, and he had the show where he had all these fashion designers and they stopped doing the show. And I am not surprised they stopped doing the show because I thought this was so damning. They would have these fashion designers and they'd have this big box of stuff and they'd have cheap stuff and then they'd have designer stuff. And they'd say, make up a mannequin of the designer stuff only. And the kids never got it right. Even the most experienced designer could never figure out what was the designer stuff. They always thought like the nicest stuff in the box and it would end up being the cheap freaking stuff. Like you could never, t and I'm like, that is a big, big, big red flag. And so Pretty in Pink really shows that like you look good in what your personal style is. And the 80s was really big about it. I, 80s fashion was iconic because people figured out what they loved and what they looked good in and they made it themselves. And what she wore in that film was so iconic and it became huge. Like that pink dress that she wears for the prom, it became such an iconic statement, you guys. Like it became such an iconic statement. You have to know that dress. You have to know that dress. Such a fashion statement. It became such a massive, massive fashion statement. And you have to know that. Like, you have to know that dress. And it wasn't something that a designer did. It wasn't Dior, it, anything like that. So you need to watch that show. And it is undeniable. It became, it defined the 80s almost, that show. that movie almost defined the 80s and it was it was not it was not anything to do with the fashion house and and you will find out so often that when you look in magazines and they're like oh the new it girl or the oh new, the new thing it's because not because they wore what everybody else was wearing but because they figured out what they felt good in and what they loved and they went into a store and grabbed their own things like there is this girl that wore this thing on the red carpet recently at the Met Gala and she just stood out from everybody else, but she bought it from like some online store or whatever. And it wasn't, 
It was like one fifth the price of like everybody else's online carpet thing. And she just ripped the house because she looked phenomenal in it. Like it was just gorgeous red gown. I'm sure she was paid to wear it because it was like an online store or whatever. But it was like it was fifteen hundred dollars and people were wearing twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollar gowns on that Malik Gala. And she ran the red carpet. She ran it in that dress because she wore what she looked good in. And that's the whole point about fashion. Fashion is knowing what you look good in, what you look good in, like these earrings. I, I dare you, I dare you to guess how much these earrings are, right? Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they gorgeous? They are stunning earrings and so is this top. Go into the description bar. You guess how much these earrings are. You guess how much they are. Go into the description box and find out how much they are. You make a guess with your friends how much they were. And then you go into the description bar and you find out how much they were. Okay? Okay. So moving on. Um, so that's Pretty in Pink. You got to see it. Iconic movie of the 80s. Next is The Goonies. I almost don't have to say anything about The Goonies. Go see it and that's it. You'll love it. It was just cult classic. It was huge at the time. Anyway, it made, um, it made the guy's career. Like the guy, you'll recognize him. He ended up becoming, uh, one of the hobbits, but it just, it defined him. He's actually, oh, I can't believe I don't remember his name, but he was a child, a star of two Hollywood, great Hollywood actors. Um, but it was his first film and he was phenomenal in it. Phenomenal in it. Um, but all the actors in it were phenomenal. Like all the actors in it were phenomenal. It was great writing and I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's, it's there. Words can't describe this movie. Like words can't describe it. It's an iconic movie that just can't be redone. And it speaks to what's inside all of us, the adventure inside all of us. It speaks to some kind of secret place inside all of us. And I think it inspired all the kids in the eighties to go out and do something big with their lives. I think in a way, um, it, it, the movie understood that what kids are capable of like today, what's so sad about helicopter parents is that they tell when they are helicopter parents, they are telling their kids, I don't think you can do it. That's what helicopter parenting is. Helicopter parenting is saying, I don't think you've got what it takes. Right? Right? If you had a helicopter parent, don't you think that you, there's a lot that you, you really think you are either, you either think that you deserve a lot of things without doing anything, which you know in your heart isn't true. You know in your heart it isn't true. Or you think like how many things in your life are you just like, I, I can't do it. Like, I can't do that. Like, I can't, I could never do that because I'm not able to. I can't do that job just because I don't have what it takes. I can't do that job just because I don't have it. It's too hard. That's too hard. That's too hard. That's too hard. And this movie understood how much we are able to do at such a young age. Like how much we're able to do at such, how much we can handle at a young age. Like how, how amazing we are. Not abuse wise. And that's not what I mean. Not abuse wise. Like now parents, it's amazing to me because helicopter parents are amazing at saying, you are not able, you are not able to handle stuff that were healthy things that we are able to handle. And yet they allow us to be neglected. They allow us, they are like, you can't handle abuse. They lean on us. They tell us that, oh, you are my, they are like, oh, you're my best friend. I can tell you all about your dad or I can tell you all about your mom. And they lean on you emotionally for support. And it's like, oh, you can't handle like real things that you can handle, like healthy things. And yet they tell you that you can handle emotional abuse. Like it's, it's just such a, it's a, such a twisted thing. And that's the thing is that Goonies came from a much healthier time and it will, it will feel good. It just feels good. It's one of those things where if you are not feeling well, you watch this movie and you are just like, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. And it also fits today because it's kind of fighting against like this developer, like 1% taking over the lower percent. It kind of fights against that. And it just, it's uplifting. And it's going to make you once again be like, what the hell are they doing with movies today? Like, what the hell? But you have to know it. You just, you cannot, you cannot not know this movie because everyone thinks you know this movie. If you don't know what the hell the Goonies are, then you, you, 
people think that you do. They assume that you do. They don't realize how much people, they just reference it, but they don't know that you don't know it. So you got to go see the Goonies. Like, you got to see the Goonies. Like, it was the box that, like, when you went into the rental store, it was, like, always checked out. Like, it was always checked out. You could never, they had, like, six copies of it because it was always gone. And all the copies were, like, all beat up. It's just that kind of movie. And you guys are going to love it. I, I can't wait for you to see it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's there. C.S. Lewis said this thing. He had this amazing quote. C.S. Lewis wrote, wrote the Chronicles of Narnia um, with Aslan and everything. And he said this amazing thing about books. He said that a good story, a truly good story is a story. If it's written well, a good story is something that will be enjoyed from a child that's five years old to someone who is 50 years old. And that's what all these movies are, like, except for the ones that are rated R. But then it's like anyone who's 18 years old to the fact that you're 50 years old. Every single one of these movies. That's why directors think that they're amazing and they rely on them for inspiration. The Goonies, five years old to 50 years old. Same, Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink, you just have to know, especially if you're in a fashion. I'm sorry, but you cannot read a fashion magazine. Every one of those editors knows Pretty in Pink. If you're involved in the beauty community or the fashion industry, you have to know Pretty in Pink. That's the bottom line. So there it is. You gotta know who Molly Wingrold is. You gotta know it. You gotta know it. That's the way it is. And it deals with class and divide and all those sorts of things. So I, I can't wait. So I will see you this weekend. One last thing, everybody. I am going to be doing, I'm gonna be doing a How Tati Films five videos a week. And just as a teaser, I have a hint on that video. So the hint lies in these two Movie Friday ones, Movie Friday 5 and Movie Friday 6. So check out those two videos, compare and contrast, and see if you can see my hint. Check them out, compare, contrast, and you'll see a little bit. Try and compare them. See if you can see what's coming up in my How Tati Films her five days a week. Please, please smash the thumbs up if you enjoyed this or if you're enjoying this series, smash that thumbs up and follow me on Twitter and follow me on um, Instagram. I'm at Book of Catherine. That's me, Book of Catherine on Twitter and on Instagram. And come see me and my kitties and videos and my photography and everything else. And be sure to subscribe. Please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these videos when they come out. Um, because I am not able to get these videos out on a consistent basis because of my health. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time. Peace out guys. See you later. Bye.